Dr. Jenkins' patient is in the delivery room to deliver her second child. The infant is born. The resuscitation team determines that the infant is born at 39 weeks. When delivered, the baby boy is flaccid and is not breathing or crying. You position, dry, and stimulate the infant. He still is not breathing, but you also take for a heartbeat and note that the heart rate is 80 beats per minute. 1. You know that a normal heart rate for a newly born baby is A. 60 beats per minute B. 72 beats per minute C. 80 beats per minute D. At least 100 beats per minute Correct answer D. At least 100 beats per minute You notice some acrocyanosis the infant begins to have some gasping respirations. Another team member applies a pulse oximeter and a cardiac monitor. Two minutes after birth, the infant's oxygen saturation is 60% on room air. 2. At two minutes after birth, you would expect the baby's oxygen saturation on room air to be at least A. 60% B. 65% C. 70% D. 75% Correct answer B. At 2 minutes after birth, you would expect the baby's oxygen saturation to be at least 65% on room air. You reposition the infant and begin positive pressure ventilation using a bag valve mass device connected to a T-piece resuscitator. 3. When providing PPV, you know that the provider must deliver breaths at A. 10 to 12 per minute B. 20 to 30 per minute C. 30 to 40 per minute D. 40 to 60 per minute Correct answer D. 40 to 60 breaths per minute is the appropriate rate for the newborn. You begin to bag the term infant at 40 to 60 breaths per minute with an oxygen concentration of 21%. As you provide PPV for 15 seconds, you instruct the team to do a quick assessment of the newborn. 4. The most significant finding of successful resuscitation of this infant is A. Decrease in cyanosis B. Increase in heart rate C. Increase in oxygen saturation D. Increase in the movement of extremities Correct answer B. An increase in heart rate after 15 seconds of PPV is a good indication of the success of lung inflation. The team member doing the assessment announces that the chest is rising and the heart rate is still at 80 beats per minute. As a resuscitation team leader, you go through the Mr. Sopa interventions to improve ventilation and increase the heart rate. After an additional 15 seconds of PPV, the team reports that the infant's heart rate has fallen to 56 beats per minute. 5. You know that the next intervention you must do is A. Applying a laryngeal mask B. Increase the respiratory rate C. Intubate the baby D. Increase the PIP on the T-piece. Correct answer, C. Intubate the baby. The decrease in heart rate is an ominous sign and indicates that the ventilation and oxygenation are not adequate. The infant is quickly moving towards full cardiac arrest. You instruct the team to prepare for endotracheal tube insertion and begin chest compressions. 6. The correct rate for chest compressions for an infant is A. 60 to 100 per minute B. 100 to 120 per minute C. 120 to 140 per minute D. Chest compressions should not be started at this time. Correct answer, B. Compressions should be started at 100 to 120 compressions per minute. 
As chest compressions and PPV continue, you prepare to intubate the infant. 7. Given the 39 weeks gestational age and weight of 2,400 grams, you anticipate that the appropriate ET tube size would be A. 2.0 millimeters, B. 2.5 millimeters, C. 3.0 millimeters, D. 3.5 millimeters. Correct answer D. 3.5 millimeters. For a term infant greater than 34 weeks gestation, the clinician can assume that a 3.5 millimeter ETT would be appropriate. You intubate the infant and instruct the team to use the PPV device to deliver breaths at 100% oxygen concentration. 8. You know that the indications that the ETT is in place include all of the following except A. Abdominal size increase B. Increased heart rate C. Symmetrical chest movement D. Breath sounds oscillated in both lungs Correct answer A. Abdominal size increase may indicate that the ETT is inserted into the esophagus and air is entering the stomach. The baby's chest is rising symmetrically and the infant's oxygen saturation has increased to 75%. However, the heart rate continues at 56 beats per minute. The team continues chest compressions coordinated with ventilation through the ETT. 9. The next intervention you should complete is A. Increased fluids B. Thoracentesis C. IV epinephrine D. Cease interventions and allow the child to die Correct answer C. IV epinephrine should be the next intervention you try while fluid volume or pneumothorax might be an issue, the infant's heart rate must be increased. The team administers epinephrine and the infant's heart rate increases to 120 beats per minute. The baby begins to move around and begins spontaneous respirations. The team begins post-resuscitation care.